visible and audio is also very clear. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, good evening, all of you. Uh, I am Rajan from uh, Research College from Haiti, Bombay. And I am working in analog mixing and light design under the supervision of Professor Marine. Many of the slides are also, uh, the content in the slides are her feedbacks and input and the, what she trained me. So I should have acknowledged in the beginning. And I will talk mainly about dynamic offset cancellation techniques, uh, which is a very common technique nowadays and used in very almost all analog IC design papers for precision applications. So we'll see like how, uh, so I will divide this talk into two. Uh, one will have a theoretical understanding in time domain, frequency domain, how this technique works. And then we will also try to simulate uh, uh, a simple chopper amplifier in cadence. Uh, it is a bit different. Uh, we need to do a different type of simulation for this chopper amplifiers because uh, it has its own uh, way of uh, uh, operation so you know, we will have it a live demo also so we'll start with first with the motivation i have these four points we'll talk about motivation the chopping techniques and some chopping applications and we'll end up with a simulation demo so now uh, many analog circuits like op amp integrator comparators in adcs back it requires amplifier with offsets in the microvolt range. We need less than one microvolt of offset in these precision applications. So this is one of the core part which we will discuss today, like how we can uh, uh, we can make our amplifier, which has a, if you see a CMOS amplifier, the native offset is around millivolts. And we, from how one, from millivolts, we can achieve a microvolt precision. Also, there are some sensors which outputs uh, a very uh, the output is very small, and in that case, we need a circuit which uh, has a microvolt precision. So, in this tutorial, we'll focus on chopping techniques with which offset can be reduced to microvolt level. There is also one technique uh, by the name auto zeroing and <coughs> correlated double sampling, which we'll not discuss. So, I thought that. Let's focus one and let's go in detail understanding it. And if anyone have any uh, doubt or question can interrupt in between because uh, uh, we have sufficient time and I think we can take, it's better to take the question in between rather in the end. So what are the circuit non-idealities uh, in, in CMOS? Uh, we have offset due to uh, whenever we fabricate two transistor like differential pair, we'll never have a matched, exactly matched transistor made on, on silicon. So it has an inherent offset and that offset depends on temperature. Suppose in summer or also in morning or in evening, the offset will drift with time. So in that case, uh, uh, it's not like that. Uh, we want to design a circuit which can work in summer, winter, morning, evening, and it should be very precise. So we need to take care about the offset drift, which is uh, just small in bandwidth because it varies with temperature. And the two uh, noise which are common in CMOS is one by F noise, which is also called a flicker noise or pink noise because the noise, the spectrum depends on the frequency. And there is a thermal noise or white noise as it's flat in frequency that's very so these are the four things which are uh, which limits our precision uh, in designing circuits so we will use chopping techniques how these things can be addressed especially uh, these techniques are useful when our signal are in this range as you can see in the screen uh, sometimes our signals are itself at dc and the offset and drift will have an error and accuracy and precision issues. And also one by F noise in, uh, is also a low frequency noise. So this type of signal, which is showing uh, shown on the screen, we, we use chopping technique uh, to isolate these non-idealities with the signal. And this is what the whole uh, lecture is all about today. So first we'll see like, uh, if you see, if you take any, uh, listen, yeah. Sorry, anyone have a question? 
Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. No question. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. So, uh, if you see any recent papers from um, any good transactions or journals, you will find uh, some symbols uh, for chopper symbols, and they don't go in detail because it's nowadays very common. So, you will either see this type of circular and a cross. Uh, this is a, a single-ended representation. And some papers you will see a differential representation like this. So what is inside these two blocks? It is exactly a very simple uh, structure which is made of four switches. And you can see that uh, between this input and output, how these four switches are arranged. So two switches are controlled by clock and two are clock bar. So what it inherently means is when clock is high, the input is equal to the output. And when clock bar is high or clock is low, then you can see the positive is connected to negative and negative is connected to positive. So by this way, uh, chopper is called as a polarity reversal switch. So that can uh, multiply V in by either plus one or minus one based on the switch. And these switches are implemented uh, with uh, either PMOS transistor, NMOS transistor, or transmission gates, based on what voltage level we are interested in. As we know that PMOS uh, is good uh, if we are near the supply rail, and NMOS is good when we are near the uh, ground. And sometimes if you want a full range, we use transmission gates as a switch in these four places. So how it works, let me go to the next slide. <coughs> So earlier we saw the symbol, now uh, let's see some waveforms like uh, how the input is converted and what is the input output waveform in time domain. We are focusing now on time domain. So if V in, if we see V in and let's assume it's a DC signal of amplitude Vx and we have a clock of uh, some frequency that will be rail to rail from ground to VDD and clock bar will be just inverse of it. So what will be the output? You can see that when VDD is high, V out is exactly the same as V in. And when VDD is low, so this switch is turns on and we have negative of Vx. So by this way, what a chopper does is just of this switching arrangement and clock, it just multiplies by one and zero based on the frequency. So this is one of the time domain representation uh, for a chopper amplifier. But now what if we have two choppers in series? In this case, we have one V in and one V out. Now we are talking about V in, uh, one chopper followed by another chopper. So what will be the V out? So we can see that similar if we give V in as Vx, and we, we have a clock. So this potential V A and V B is exactly a square wave with amplitude V X. And at V out, we can see that at clock we have exactly V X, and at at the ground we have minus of minus V X. That is exactly V X. So what it means? If we have two choppers in series, we can reproduce our signal back from D C to A C and again to A C. So this is the core uh, idea of modulation and demodulation and how it helps to reduce the offset we will see in the next slide. So let's assume uh, in these two choppers we have one source VDC, this red one. So now how the waveforms will vary? Input, clock and VA, it is similar to our previous slide. And this VB, you can see that this square wave has gone a bit up by just exact amount of VDC. And if VDC is large, this uh, the square wave will, will go in positive direction more. So what will happen if we demodulate back the second chopper, what it does? So now on top, we'll have v, Vx plus VDC. And when 
clock is low, we will have the negative of this term that is Vx minus Vdc. So what we, we come to know is that at the output, we still have the information at the DC and our offset is modulated at a square wave. You can see from Vx plus Vdc and Vx minus Vdc. So what it represents, it represents that the input is modulated twice the output remains at DC and if a DC input is modulated only once, the output modulates to a clock frequency. So by this way we are separating out, this is the core uh, idea of separating out. Since our input was also at DC and our non-ideality is also at DC, so the idea is to modulate it to a higher frequency, then, uh, then let the DC comes in and then we demodulate again so that we will again get a DC and this and on ideality this offset voltage at the other square wave. So now what uh, to recover back we need a simple low pass filter. So uh, how it works is uh, this is a superposition view like uh, in time domain. We have input, we have a square uh, uh, modulated output. Then we can see that I have not shifted this graph up because it's a superposition. So we will have this square wave and a DC appear if you have an ideal filter what does an ideal filter do it just removes uh, uh, this uh, a higher frequency and it, it will allow only dc current so this is the frequency representation uh, any a signal in dc if you calculate the fourier transform is an impulse and for any square wave if you take the uh, fourier transform it is a impulse uh, it, it is a train of impulse with uh, odd harmonics. So this is the third, fifth and third, uh, fundamental third and fifth. And now if DC adds to it and when they de demodulate, this shifts to the higher frequency and DC is from that. And in the end at the output, if we add a low pass filter, ideal low pass filter, we can recover back our input exactly as it is. So it's like offset is completely removed and by this way exactly this is the way which uh, we are able to generate micro volt of uh, precision. But nothing is ideal in this world. So what will happen if you have a practical low pass filter? So let me show you the spectrum. So if you have a practical low pass filter, we cannot eliminate the square wave and it will have some ripples. Due to this ripples, we'll have some error and that's why we are telling that we can achieve at micro volt levels. Ideally, it should have it should have eliminated offset completely. So now, what uh, uh, this was a DC offset. Just this is all just to build up like how a chopper amplifier is made. Now, what if I have an amplifier of magnitude one here in the center, something like this? The spectrum will be exactly the same because nothing will nothing has changed. Of uh, whatever input was uh, VA plus VDC is. Uh, exactly what VD is. Now what if we have a gain here, amplifier with a gain A. So what we have done is we have, uh, this is the exact model of an amplifier with an offset. You can see if we have a DC signal, it is amplified, it is not, it is modulated and after the amplifier, the signal as well as the offset is amplified a bit. Then it is uh, demodulated input comes back to DC and we have some ripples. So this is an exact structure of a simple chopper amplifier, one at the uh, beginning and one at the end. So uh, this is the core part and this is what we will simulate today and we'll try to figure out like how to set up and how to see these noise and offset translations uh, in, in cadence. So now what chopping techniques helps, it helps in mitigating, means reducing the offset, mitigates the offset drift and mitigates the 1 over F noise. Everything is translated to a higher frequency and one more thing to point out it, it has no effect on thermal noise. So the reason is uh, thermal noise is flat and if you multiply by square wave, you will get the same spectrum in uh, so this mass is uh, easily available in any RF books. Uh, if you can refer to he has explained well that chopping doesn't affect the thermal noise. So 
this uh, chopper is exactly how a mixer is implemented but we are using a square wave and mixer this can also be a sine wave so the, what simulation setup we are uh, we will see today is equally applicable to some simulating some rf circuit like simulating some mixers so the same chopper can be used uh, uh, in various other places uh, which we'll see now is uh, like to generate a square wave current so if we have a current source and a current sink and if we use a chopper here you can see that the output i out suppose this is i source and this is this is the reference zero we have i sinks at the negative point when we reduce the high i source is flowing when we reduce the low i sink is flowing to so positive negative so this way uh, square wave is generated so this has a very good application in biomedical application for eti measurement electro tissue impedance bio impedance everywhere uh, these choppers are used for generating the square waves and there is also an application which is called dynamic element matching uh, when we need to match two, two currents so the, uh, the same chopper which we have seen earlier can be used suppose we have a we want to match these two current source and the amplitude is a bit different i1 and i2 you can see the amplitude from zero i1 is more compared to i2 so what will happen if you have a chopper and what how will i i out one and i out two will look when the clock is high i1 will flow and when clock is low i2 will flow if you see effectively the average value it is i1 plus i2 by 2 so exactly what people do is in especially in current steering racks where we have many current sources so what we what people do they use element element matching if there are two elements we have chopper and the same thing can be extended to two three four elements so effectively if we filter out this uh, waveform i out one and i out two and if we see only the average value so it is pretty well matched this is how people are doing precision electronics now in mix signal at the heart everywhere you will find this is chopper so now to start with the simulation we will first see like what is the uh, fundamental difference between simulating this type of circuit and uh, a, a non clocked circuit so it everything boils down to how a simulator works if we see that uh, if we see this in the screen and we have a non linear circuit uh, we have a diode and resistor and a voltage source if we want to calculate a vd and id how can we calculate so uh, like linear equation like ax plus by is equal to c or cx plus by is equal to f this type of equation can be uh, solved very easily using matrices determinants but this type of non linear equation is cannot be solved linearly and here the simulator really helps what the simulator do it solves two equations by newton reference method which is uh, in engineering mathematics we all have studied so it start with an initial guess and it iterates and just comes to a solution so this is the approach by which a simulator solves this id and vd so there it is important that we need to uh, in newton reaction we need if you want accuracy of four decimal places what we do is we stop when uh, when after three or four decimal places we are getting the same result similarly in simulator also we need to set that how much accuracy we want so it is it is important now the second one way is to solve graphically this is for completeness it's not related to simulation like this type of equation can be solved using graphs also so how uh, we'll do those analysis uh, in cable so whenever we have any bias circuit and a voltage source and a resistor and diode so we'll have due to the dc we'll have this capital vd and id and for ac we'll have vd and id so what a simulator does if you want some ac analysis or if you are doing some noise analysis first it does a dc analysis on it and it calculates this vd and id the same way it is done here then it uses this id in, uh, then then it linearizes the circuit for small signal and then it uses this dc to plug it here and just gives you the value of ac uh, that ac analysis or if you see uh, noise analysis like uh, 
here I have a sliding which suppose if we have a transistor same thing we can do for DC it will calculate uh, the value of ID VD and with this value it calculates the GM. Similarly, if you are doing noise analysis, what it will do, it will calculate 4KT gamma GM is the noise of the transistor. So this GM is calculated by first simulating with this, uh, getting this DC value. So now, what is the uh, difference between uh, uh, simulating this type of circuit and the chopper? So the moment we put a chopper, we are just changing the schematic with time. So in that way, uh, we cannot have a single DC operation and calculate the noise and AC and every, every simulation can be done. For that, we need to do PSS analysis, periodic steady state analysis. The idea behind uh, PSS analysis is, uh, in our case, since we are using a square wave, uh, it has only two states. Uh, let me show this. Either it has VDD and zero. So what what happens is uh, uh, the circuit is only in two configuration. But what if we if we have a sine wave in this clock? So there are various DC operating points we need to call because that's not a small signal analysis. That's why we need to every time calculate the DC operating point with uh, with time. So for that, we will see the steady state analysis uh, for uh, our work. So, is anyone having any question? We can take, we have enough time. Or if something is not clear, we can discuss. No, no, I think it's clear. Okay, fine. So, uh, what we will do is uh, for simulating differential circuit, uh, uh, there is some uh, while we are simulating cadence and it creates a differential circuit, we need to have a single voltage source to. Okay, there is a question like what is periodic PSS analysis? PSS is periodic steady state analysis. It is a DC analysis which is done at different instant of time. If we do a static circuit like this, if we don't have any clock in it, so it, it calculates DC once and then it calculates the noise and AC or whatever parameters you want to, whatever analysis you want to do. In switching circuit, what we are doing, we are changing the topology in with time. First input is connected in one way and then with clock it is changing. So there we do PSS for calculating DC operating point at different, different locations. In our case, we'll have only two different operating points since it's a clock with two levels only. So it's just two DC operating. But if we use a sine wave for, suppose if you want to simulate in a mixer, if you use a sine wave, then you need to see like, you need to simulate at a different different points on the sine wave. Calculate the DC. It's it's a simple DC analysis at with time, and it is also sometimes uh, called like large signal analysis. Means with time when operating point changes, how we calculate the noise. So we'll see the setup uh, in our second part of the simulation. Uh, the second part of the talk. Now, uh, uh, for simulating a differential circuit. Uh, and a single ended circuit. So in CMOS mostly we use single ended circuit means we have only ground and we have only VDD. We will not have minus VSS. So all our input to our amplifier, chopper, everything uh, need to be shifted uh, a bit. Uh, anything in between the supply rails and the sine waves can be given like this. So how we want to, how we can we make this thing in cadence is simply using voltage control voltage source. So uh, there is the reason behind using this type of topology, we need a single source for calculating the input record noise. So if you see like if this is VAC and if we have a DC source like this, so what output we will get? 
uh, the input is v, the differential input is vac and if this node is connected to vdc we uh, effectively we get vdc plus vac and here we have minus 0.5 here we get vdc minus vac by 2 effectively in time domain uh, we need a signal like this to simulate our chopper amplifier so these are some acknowledgements from where the lecture slides and this is this is basically what i have for uh, our theory part so now what we can do is uh, if anyone has some questions we can take it here or we can start our uh, uh, demo simulations on this uh, Chatbox, uh, what is PSS? That question. Yeah, I, I, uh, PSS is a DC analysis which uh, varies with time. Means when, whenever we have a switching circuit, we need to do have, we need to calculate multiple times the operating point. That is the PSS analysis. So uh, we cannot simulate it, it this type of circuit with a traditional approach. So that's why this uh, PSS is there. It is a simple setup which we need to do once and thereafter you can simulate any switching circuit, even auto zeroing which I have not covered today. Well, that can also be done. This type of simulation can be done with PSS. This can also be done. Anything else uh, if someone wants to ask or we can start our uh, demo session. No answers. So I will start with the demo session then. Fine. Professor Atta. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Acha, uh, somebody has asked a question. Please show what if this is Please show one CMOS proper circuit. Yeah, yeah. That is what. Uh, what if I do in simulation? This is what uh, I was like. How exactly we can? So the motivation for today's lecture was to practically show and so that anyone can reproduce uh, this type of circuits. In the, so I will cover this exactly one by one. How I take the transistor, how I make a chopper circuit. So that will come in our demonstration. Okay, fine. We'll start the demonstration. So first, let me make a lab video I will call it like DSC. I have to attach a technology library which we have. And this is for the models for the transistors like VT values, minimum CRs, all these things. So first I will make a simple NMOS chopper. So all I can make is I need a transistor. So I will use it.
what I'm doing is I, I need to make this. Oh, so this is what I'm using. So now I will add some code things. <coughs> so now I need uh, what I need now is inputs are done now i need plot and plot map i will use select two plot and this is our plot map now to, to make it as a chopper we need to apply a plot map here i will label it plot map So this node where it should be connected. It should be connected here and this node should be connected here. So I will put the label I mean So is it fine like uh, uh, is it the exact implementation here what we are saying? So there is a question like how WL of a transistor to be chosen for chopper. The first thing is it should be as low as possible. We try with minimum size so that uh, the um, the minimum size is chosen so that we don't have any drop and uh, for speed reasons also. And sometimes we are we need to increase the width to reduce the R round if we have a very high current flowing through it. But for low power. Uh, application everyone chooses the small size and the one big reason of using the minimum size is like we need to uh, have to reduce the charge injection problem and plot feed through so that's why if you have a smaller uh, transistor we can avoid this type of problem so now it's fine this input uh, when clock is high input is equal to output high in n is equal to out n and when clock bar is high this part will connect it here and this is done. So now what I will do, I will just make a symbol. I will just go in order to put a symbol on the ground since this is the bulk of uh, animals. Now we are done with the chapter part. Now we need a simple OTA. So let's make a very simple OTA. I will just use.
we need a differential pair with resistive load. This is the transfer. Now the What we are doing is we are exactly replicating something like this. So we have a supply of one point two. So I have a difference of three to uh, connecting this instrument. It, it is a bit organized, so in the end, sometimes it helps a lot in debugging. And Layout also. So now we need what we need more. Let's see the diagram. We need a clock source. And actually, this V clock uh, for this chopper the symbol. We need actually two clock sources, clock and clock bar. So we will use uh, two V pulse. Zero and one point two. And let's make a variable period S for rise time 100 people because in 180 a typical rise time is around 80. Let's take it a bit realistic. Uh, so these clocks can be generated easily using deep flip clocks. We have we'll have one clock and uh, 
do the deep flip flop on the q and q bar will act as a flop and flop bar Now we need a differential excitation source. We can label these things as We see all those are time domain of frequency domain. So now what we need now we need a excitation source. We also need this. For that, we need to do this. We can give any for now. Let's start with this. Let's give the point one. Since uh, this is the reference we are interested in, so I will keep exactly the half of the supply. This is positive with the moon. <laughs> so first we we'll see that all connections are proper. First we'll see that whether this excitation signal is proper or not. It's better for us to check in the video module each and everything then Simple transient analysis and
and then to the point you see all these notes. If anyone has issue like uh, or how I'm doing the problem, even if it is not uh, if it is very little, but you can interact in the between this technology and that. So we are interested in for now just to see so we can directly add to this note. Miraj, uh, yeah. it might mean you keep uh, audio audio, maybe the audio is getting low. Sorry? Ah, you, ah, you, your audio is low, please. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine, fine. <clears throat> so this is our signal, uh, the DC reference. Uh, since we are using a single supply, we need a DC reference. And we have this uh, uh, very proper differential signal. If you take the difference, we will have a good uh, proper sign. So this is our excitation signal is fine. And now, now let's uh, see whether let me just start with the one which we started with, the simple DC source. Now, if we see the intermediate nodes, first we label this node. We label it as V8 plus V2 minus We see the inputs and we we'll see how output is there after amplification and finally after the modulation. They are driving signals. Okay. Both uh, 
the clock bar and clock was same. So when clock is zero, the clock bar should be one point two. What I will do again is just take this. You will see that all is clear to the top of the object. So this is nine hundred point five, and this is. Uh, the average value is from this is the plus. It is it has modulated our one digit uh, signal to less than one point five, and uh, this is after amplification. And this, is, this is after amplification, and this if I merge these two. I think the better way to see is to take the differential. This thing. So now we are taking differential. Means we will see this differential. Okay, uh, we will see the differential input of all modes. So we are giving one one millivolt uh, differential at the input. This is exactly what we are showing here. This somewhere this we have just some gain stage here. I will introduce an offset. Then we have one millivolt minus one millivolt, and after amplification, amplification is seven point six three. So we have a gain of seven point six three. And at the output we get seven point six three. So what it did, whatever one millivolt we get, we got two. Now I will introduce an offset voltage here. So let's see how uh, for offset we'll add a DC of zero point one. So this we are doing is we are simulating this setup. So we are doing this. This is seven point six three, and this is point one. And we will see the spectrum of the output. See the output and input. Let's go all of these signals. This is. Uh, One millivolt, one millivolt. If you take the average of these two, it will the DC value will be seven point six three. And uh, you can see that over that DC we have a square wave, which is represented this this like the output. We have a the information is in at our DC, and over that DC we have a square wave. So this is what it represents. So whatever input we apply. It got uh, amplified, and the offset also got amplified because of the gain table. If you have a gain of one, it will have some amplification. So till now, anyone has any doubt? We don't go to the pencil anymore. Meeraj. Yes. There is one question in the chat box, and uh, uh, 
little louder na your mic can you please hold it near your mouth some voice breaks are through okay yeah now so now so breaking actually when, no when you were when you was presenting the ppt you know it was clear but now i don't know maybe louder either you have to speak louder or okay okay yeah, the moment, yes yes so the question is what is the chopping frequency you have chosen and will it affect the performance of the design yes chopping frequency the higher the chopping frequency the uh, the better the noise reduction so you can see in frequency domain if you increase the chopping frequency it will uh, the input will be separated from uh, your non identities so the more the chopping frequency the more but at the same time the more the frequency uh, there are other switch related issues which comes into picture so we need to uh, we need to we should only design what is required if we have a particular noise requirement based on that we select the chopping frequency why do if we have a higher means these all uh, uh, means uh, modulated uh, non identity will be shifted to very high you can see in a simple filter will eliminate everything um, the ones of charge injection no uh, charge injection is the property of the switch and uh, yes Yes, yes. Charge injection will affect if we increase the chopping frequency. If every if in more cycle, in every cycle there will be uh, a charge injection, right? It will affect. So this is the demo. You all can try it with uh, different value, and if you, you can see these spikes, ideally it should be a square wave at the output. So these spikes are due to uh, the rise fall time of our clock is not uh, infinite. Means, uh, Uh, you can, I have intentionally kept hundred picosecond of rise time of the clock. The reason is uh, in practical chips you cannot make a very sharp rise and fall. So these are the spikes, which is called chopping spikes. Uh, the filter also eliminates this thing, and in the end, after filtering, we uh, get a very good pure uh, DC signal. Now we'll see the how uh, this is this is related to the offset. What if we give a sine wave to our signal? So what we are doing is uh, we have kept a signal of this blue one, and now let's see what if we give some sine wave of let's see if we can see something here. So this is the output what we get. Yes. So when the clock is high, the sine wave is there. When clock is low, inverse of sine. Minus. And you can see that uh, the sine wave is there, and on top of it, there is an offset. So this is low frequency, and the square wave at high frequency is creating circuit problem. So this is. Uh, in time domain, whenever you simulate chopping circuit, uh, all offsets uh, will come like this. And if we make it again, our offset zero, you can see like how it appears. So this is a time wave. Amplitude will be around seven point six three. The gain of our amplitude. So these spikes uh, after filtering increment, and uh, so this is uh, the uh, beauty of chopping techniques. Like even with a big offset, we are able to get uh, we recover our signal back. Now what we will do? We will uh, simulate the noise where we will require the PSS and the noise simulation. So what is needed is uh, whenever we do Uh, PSS or T-noise simulation. We need to disable our input. So we have disabled our input, uh, the input signal. And uh, now what we will do is we'll simulate and see the filter noise function. For that we need to go to PSS. So PSS and DC both are same. What does DC does the uh, DC analysis once and PSS does for every time. So how to calculate how much 
फ्रीक्वेंसी से अपने यूनिकली ऑटो कैलकुलेट इट फाउंड्स आउट द लॉग फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड आउटपुट हार्मोनिक इज लाइक हाउ मच एक्यूरेसी वी नीड टू विद हाउ मच एक्यूरेसी वी नीड टू डू द डीसी एनालिसिस सो इफ इट इज वन के सो इफ आई पुट टेन तो टेन हार्मोनिक मीन्स टेन के सो दिस दी डी सी एनालिसिस विल बी डन एट ए फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ वन ओवर टेन के सो दिस हेल्प्स इन Uh, more accurate result. In our case, there is not, no no issue because we have a square wave, so it's a just two level. But when we do some RF simulation, the more harmonic systems, the more accurate our results will be. And then we need P noise. We can do a simple noise and P noise. Simple noise means it will uh, it will not uh, take into consideration the effect of chopping. So let's do both and let's see the comparison like how we chopping and not chopping. We get better performance. So I am simulating from point uh, one hertz to ten k. I will select my output notes. So this is my notes. And here there is we need to select our input uh, source. That's why we need we made this type of setup. This is our input source. Okay, we are done. This is a simple noise. Now we will do a uh, P noise. I think we will do one to ten K. So this is like how much spectrum we we want in the output. Similarly, we need to give the uh, the. So now uh, this reference side band is very important because uh, when we are simulating chopper circuit, in the end what. Whatever input we have, the output is at the same frequency. That's why we need to put zero. But if we because reference side band is zero and zero plus one will be zero, and input will be output. In the end, after two choppers, whatever input we give, it uh, gives that the modulus to that position. But if we are using mixer, we need to change this uh, this uh, this field. So this is the only difference between simulating a mixer and uh, the chopper. So now all things is set. Now we run the sensor. So we will see like uh, what is the noise spectrum when they when we don't have any chopper. So I will plot input noise and after chopper. After adding chopper simulation, how the noise improves? Let's do this. So, so this is the flicker noise component. If you see this one by f noise, and if you see this flat part of the thermal and flicker both in the one, you will see that this is not proper. So one thing, whenever you simulate uh, the P noise, we need to do one more setting. It's all about accuracy. Go to P noise, and there is uh, that is how we are calculating the sweep type. Let us be log logarithmic, and we will use around hundred. Hundred points per decade. We take if we calculate the number of points. Now it will take a bit more time, but the spectrum will be pretty accurate. So it's like how uh, what setup you get, it's matter a lot. So now if you see the simulation at uh, one kilobytes, 
this P noise, one kilohertz, infinite flicker noise is ignored. This point warning was given because uh, one by F noise, if you see the F is in the denominator. So at zero frequency, you will get infinite noise. So that's why you cannot plot those things in a simulator. So what it does is uh, that values is not reliable. You can see this one thing. Actually, it's going to infinite. So this point can be ignored, and you can see that the flicker noise at one k is there. Then three, three k, five k, seven k, nine k. So this is exactly what we were talking about here. Now, uh, uh, due to this chopping technique. All our non-idealities are shifted to a higher frequency, and our signal is back to DC. So this is this is something we are able to isolate our signal and our offset one by f noise and drift. Everything modulates to a higher frequency. So so this is uh, without chopping, we'll have a very good noise uh, at near to DC. Because our transistor sizes are very small, and filter noise depends on the size of the transistor. So now we have shifted, and now we get very low noise for our DC measurements. So this is uh, the frequency domain uh, analysis. Since we have a lot of time, we can discuss. And if someone has any question, can please ask. Regarding simulation setup, uh, this this is the left graph, no? It is white noise plus filter noise. Yeah, this is white noise. Okay, okay. One thing what we can do is uh, there is a very good uh, option in uh, cadence is go to simulation option analog, and I will turn off uh, the thermal noise so that I we can only see. We'll turn off and we'll turn off which noise. Thermal. Then we need to select a, which module we want to. So what what I did, I turned off the OTA thermal. So when we simulate now, we will get only flicker. That exactly what we have here. So this is very helpful to options here. So this is exactly um, the noise spectrum. This is we, means we can separately analyze flicker, separately white. Yeah, yeah, you can separate, separate, separately yeah. analyze anything with these options. And what I was yeah. talking about accuracy setting when when I started this part, uh, this here. So whenever it calculate DC operation or DC operating point, it it does Newton Raphson. It it take a guess and it calculates calculates and at what point it need to it needs to stop. Suppose if you are working at a very low uh, very low offset measurement circuit or very low current circuit, then at that time these options you need to set properly. Otherwise, uh, you don't get. Yeah. Okay. this noise is input referred noise. Yeah, input referred noise. Ach, so, so every time we get better to calculate input referred noise as we are not interested. Uh, if we change the gain noise, we change the frequency also. So these are well tall, B F tall, I F tall. So this is the what the tolerance when it calculates uh, when it solves those non-linear equation. Now the accuracy is one micro. But if you are working on nanovolt level signal, you should reduce it to nanovolts. This is it depends on the how accurate you want. Otherwise, if you make a chip out of it, we'll see that later that it's not working what we designed for. So simulator settings is really important whether you do whatever analysis. So we should know at least how we need to set based on the requirement. And the other drawback is if you set it very very low. Suppose if you are working at microvolts level, so signal level, and you put it nano or pico, the problem is it will take a lot of time because you know this alteration will go on till uh, we don't get accuracy of five digit, six digit of uh, decimal places.
So these are some important aspects uh, which we need to consider. And uh, one, since we have a time and we are not having any question, so there is one option called the uh, result browser. Uh, for debugging circuit, this is really very helpful, which is in place in Google Browser. Whatever analysis we do, uh, it, it comes here. Like now, we have run a P-noise, noise, cron. All these things are there. PSS. So we can, we can get all these parameters, individual components. What are the noise of each and every component? What is the filter noise component of this I0? Filter noise component of this thermal noise component, filter noise component, RD and RS is the source and drain noise. This is the total noise. So here uh, in this result browser, we can we can we can debug each and every uh, get to know the information of each and every transistor. So this is a very helpful uh, when we work with uh, some very huge circuits. And if uh, there is also we can calculate the RMS value of noise while going to result, print, and then noise summary. So since we have done two noise simulation, one is simple noise, which it, it doesn't take into consideration the clock, and this is the key noise. Now whether when we want integrated noise, we need to see like suppose we want to design a circuit for application from 0 to 0.1 to 100 hertz. So the higher limit we know that we will uh, 100 hertz is the bandwidth. So why we select 0 0.1? 0 0.1 is the lower limit determines that for what time your circuit is going to work. If you need a one second operation, then what from one hertz is fine. So the lower limit is always determine the observation time. One by T observation is this number you need to do. Suppose you need to analyze your calculating noise of your system, which will work for 10 seconds. So this you need to put 0.1. And uh, now let's see, these are the noise component of each. The input effort noise for our bandwidth will be this 2.48 microvolt per hour of this amplifier. And uh, without, if you see chopping, and if you do the same thing, it's um, yeah, it's seventeen minutes. So the noise has reduced around uh, six times lower only because of chopping. So if we increase the clock frequency, this noise will further go down. So this is the advantage of uh, very, so in summary, if I if, if want to conclude, chopping technique is used where we need a very low noise, low offset, precision, and circuit design. So any other question? This is a current mode, uh, this is voltage mode technique, right? That day, Madam actually, she and Madam also explained uh, dual chopping. And, uh, yes, yes. Current current mode techniques. She also told about it. This is the yeah. voltage mode. 